Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios and I'm going to go running through another one of our Clipex Pro tutorials today. Now, myself and Stray, the actual developer behind Clipex Pro, have, have kind of split things up so that he's going to be doing videos on Q&A. So if you've got a specific use case for Clipex Pro that you want to know, A, can it do it? And B, how does it do it? Then leave a comment on the bottom of this video, get in touch via the email, isotonic at isotonicstudios.com, or get involved on Stray's forums over at beatwise.com. Now, the videos that I'm gonna be presenting, whilst they won't quite get into the detail of writing actions and, and creating huge long strings of stuff, they're more from my point of view about, well, I've never used Clipex Pro before, I've never used Clipex, so how do I get started? And today's video is a really important one for me because I come from a background of playing with buttons. Um, as you can see, where most people would have ornaments, I collect MIDI controllers. I've got a box of them down here as well. And today I'm gonna to be putting to purpose some of the controllers that have been, well, in storage for a little while because they didn't quite fit with my setup. And after a while of playing with them with Max for Live, I thought there's better controllers out there. And whilst I'm using the Push 2 and the Machina Mark III at the moment, I'm gonna dig in out some older controllers along with some popular ones like the Launchpad range from Novation. Now, in my cramped little studio, there's not enough room to get all of these out, so we're gonna to have to decamp to the kitchen. And fingers crossed, I'll have this video done before my wife gets home. Keep watching. Okay, so today's setup kicks off with uh, a pair of Allen & Heath controllers. Uh, the 1D grew up and became the K2 and the K1. Now the K2 actually comes with an audio interface, so we're gonna use that uh, with our queuing. And we're gonna set up a load of X controls on that, so they'll trigger Clip X controls from the, the buttons, etc. The Novation Launchpad Pro will handle the drums. It's velocity sensitive, so best suited for that. And we've got the keys handled by the Launch Key Mini, nice and compact there, running off the mini USB cable. And finally, a nice another pairing, the Novation Launchpad, the original, along with the launch control. And we'll be using these, even though they've got control surface scripts, to launch uh, X clips and the like. All of these linked together with the Novation Audio Hub makes the whole thing sing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow along with the XT scripts in the manual, which you'll currently find at page number six. And we're gonna start off with the preferences. And as you can see, I've already pre-selected Clip X. So I've got my K1, K2, K1, moving through the Launch Key, the Launch Pro, uh, the Launch Key Mini, and the Launch Pad. So what I wanna do is I wanna use the K2 and the K1 for running my X controls. Now, generally speaking, when I have that open, if we remember from the previous video, it's very simple just to create it, and we created the Isotonic CC101, uh, which enabled that. Now, that's gonna work for the Clipex Pro script that's in the first slot. And as you can see, we've come alive now, but we won't be able to use those same controls, even though they're, you know, they're a different MIDI channel and stuff like that, because there's no control surface script here. So what we've done is we provide you with five additional scripts, uh, XT scripts effectively, and in creating one, as you can see here, you'll get an XTA folder. Let's just switch the launch key over to the X. C, and let's change it to B. So as you can see, a folder is generated each time you select one, and within the folder, you'll find the next controls text, which enables you to set up and do as you wish with regards to your X controls. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this part is actually look at retrofitting ClipX Pro to uh, basically a control surface script that already exists. Of course, we've seen that where a control Surface Script doesn't exist. We use the Clipex Pro and then Clipex Pro A, B, C, etc., which uh, 
XT scripts A, B, and C have already been set up. But consider, if you will, if you had six controllers that all already had control surface script set up, you, you'd have no slots left to be able to load ClipX Pro. Um, so you need to have it, the script itself loaded to be able to use the the X clips and uh, everything else. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to follow the instructions on the website. And I've got to be honest, it's, it's so simple. You rename one file and you drop another file in place. Now it's worth mentioning that the Push and the Push 2 can't be retrofitted, but we're going to work on the Launchpad Pro and the Launchpad as I've got those two connected here. So first off, go to the website and you're going to be going to the Clipex Pro forum effectively, which is at the Beatwise network. And that's beatwise.proboards.com. And the uh, title is loading Clipex Pro from another script. So very, very simple. As I mentioned, it's non-invasive. No permanent changes are made to the scripts and you can always undo them. Doesn't require any programming knowledge, as I'll demonstrate. Um, one slightly technical note though, and uh, I should go back to this particular one here. So the Launchpad Pro is the first control surface that's going to be loaded in the list that we're going to add the ClipX Pro functionality to. Now, if I wanted to use that with my X controls, it would be this X controls text here in the root folder that I'd add my X control commands to. The launch pad though will actually when loaded with the retrofitting of ClipX Pro create me a new folder here which will include the name of the control surface. So let's look at how very simply we can do this. First up as you're logged in as a, a forum member you just simply need to download the init.py uh, py python file effectively and we're going to utilize that uh, do it here by adding it to the MIDI remote script for the launch pad now because you want to be able to uh, undo this if you want um, what we're going to do is we're going to rename this init PYC so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this and I'm going to use the first two underscores and then original and then another underscore. So that's underscore underscore original underscore in it underscore underscore dot PYC. Then for my downloads and because I want to repeat this I'm going to copy the PY file in. Now, when Ableton loads, it will compile that PY file and it will turn it into the underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot, PYC file that you'll see appear shortly. Now, live doesn't do this live. So effectively, once you've done all of your changes, and I, as you can see, I've already done the same for the Launchpad Pro here, you need to close down live, quit, and then, reopen okay so if we go to live and the preferences okay so we'll move this over here so you can see what's happening the launchpad pro launchpad pro etc that's going to be controlled by the x controls text and the launch pad being the second or even the third, fourth, fifth, etc., has created its own folder, much like the XT scripts. It's named after the launch pad, and as you can see, control contains its own X controls text file for you to add your X controls to. Thanks for watching.